let's take a look how it works. So I opened our built-in project into Streamline Windows. Let's take a look at this sample project first. So this is a sample company built in into Streamline. It sells consumer goods, fashion, food, perm, pharmacy, everything. So it's a sample company. And it does uh, around 200 million annually. And um, if we look at the inventory side, we could see a number of products, a number of suppliers. And um, for these suppliers, we configure it, configure it container IDs. So each supplier is, um, is, uh, is supplied or transported into a single container. So all items of one supplier travel in one container. Let's take a look at the container configuration. We created a default container size. So uh, you can configure containers independently for each supplier, but you also have default settings. So as default settings, we specified um, ordering cost for one container as $1,500 and the quantity, maximum quantity we can uh, transport in one container is 50,000. That's not very realistic, but uh, it's close to, to uh, reality because um, I just don't want to go through volume and weight calculations. Um, and uh, we specified quantity, maximum quantity uh, that we can load to one container as 50,000. Think of it about, um, think of it as, uh, as bottles, for instance. Uh, for bottles, you often understand the quantity you can load to one container. And uh, our inventory holding costs for this company is 20% annually. So annual interest rate for this company or holding costs is 20% annually. And uh, many companies have uh, annual interest rate, annual holding costs between 20 and 30%. So, um, Inventory is very expensive, actually. Okay. Uh, well, and um, in this project, in this sample project, we order once a month and top up containers to purchase in full containers. So let's see how this works. So here is this project and uh, um, well, uh, it works to mention that Streamline has a built-in tool called Time Machine that allows us to roll out events on our timeline and see how our, our supply chain will look like in the future. So this is, so to say, a virtual ERP system inside Streamline that executes purchasing recommendations shows us future on-hand quantities, orders in transition, open sales orders, open purchase, uh, purchase orders, and so on. So this allows us to test out any strategy that we set up in Streamline. So I'll open, I'll open um, the uh, time machine and uh, the dashboard. And I want to simulate uh, 30 days of demand. And then um, I'll go to another project and um, let it purchase in economic order quantities. So I, uh, instead of purchasing once a month, I'll let it purchase in economic order quantities, even every day if needed. Uh, but we will see that it's not going to purchase every day, of course, because economic order quantity recommends us larger quantities. Let's take a look what what this recommends. Um, I should probably start with showing you how how we recommend purchasing in full containers first. So I'll go to plant orders, export it.
OK. So let's check. For this first supplier, we purchased three items. And the quantity in total that we purchase is here, almost 50,000. That's because we specified that in one container we can transport 50,000 units. If you look at another supplier, this one, for instance, the sum for it will be again close to 50,000. Uh, for this one, we purchased two containers because it doesn't fit into just one. Our demand is larger than one container. That's why we purchased two containers. Um, for next one, we purchase 50,000. And for the last one, again, close to 50,000. And that's how uh, purchasing in full containers work in Streamline. Let's uh, see what economic order quantity would say about our purchase. Um, I'll go to settings and allow it purchasing more frequently. And uh, planned orders, export. Uh, the first one, the first supplier with three items, and Streamline tells us to purchase 46,000 out of 50, because um, these items are quite expensive. Let's take a look at these two, for instance, and Streamline, again, recommends to purchase 45. And uh, what about this one? 45. Here it is, 38. So we uh, purchase frequently, but our container is not fully loaded because our items are expensive. So we spend more on, on, uh, on uh, transportation costs, but we run with lower frozen capital. Let's see how this converts into profits. Because profits is what we earn, less what we spend. And holding costs is a significant part of our spendings. Um, yeah, let's check it once again. So yeah, we allowed economic order quantities. We have uh, container cost. We have holding costs. So we can uh, start simulation. Okay, so here we see our holding costs for a three month simulation, ordering costs and total costs. And if we compare that to periodic purchasing, we could see that uh, here we have total costs, 750,000 and here 550,000. So um, by enabling, EOQ, we saved this company $200,000 in only three months, which is uh, uh, a worthwhile result. So economic order quantity really is very useful technique. 